For our final segment uh, this week, for me, 50, 50 years ago this week, it was kind of a, a, a tough a tough week. The guy who was my first hockey hero, the guy who was my first favorite player, guy I followed every week on Hockey Night in Canada, announced his retirement from the Buffalo Sabres this week. And uh, we got a couple stories to tell you about, uh, about that. First, Red Burnett of the Toronto Star. He wrote Dick Duff. One of the great little men to travel the National Hockey League trails has decided to retire at age 35 after more than 16 full seasons of NHL warfare. He had hoped to reach the 300 goal mark before calling it a day. But after a huddle with Punch Imlach, GM of the Sabres, Duff decided this week that this is it. This season, Dick scored two goals in eight games, but he had spent most of his time watching his Sabres teammates from the sidelines. And this is a new departure for the Kirkland Lake native. Dick has always been an NHL regular. His lifetime NHL totals are 283 goals, 289 assists, in 1,030 big league games, plus 30 goals and 49 assists and 114 Stanley Cup playoff outings. Duff never spent a day in the minor leagues. He had a three-game trial with the Maple Leafs in 1954-55, coming up from St. Michael's Juniors, and he turned pro with them the following season, even though he had a season of junior eligibility left. He spent the better parts of nine seasons with the Maple Leafs, and he played prominent parts in two Stanley Cup wins in Toronto, before he had a brief stay in New York. Then he moved to Montreal for four seasons and parts of two others. He played on six Stanley Cup champions, two with Toronto, four with Canadians. This is the second time the 5,965-pound Duff has announced his retirement. He tried to walk away from hockey early in the 69-70 season because of personal and health reasons, but Sam Pollock, his general manager at Montreal, talked him into giving hockey one more fling. In announcing Dick Duff's retirement, Punch Imlach said, he was one of the greatest little men hockey players I have ever seen. He had an uncanny ability to get himself up for big games and to score important playoff goals. He was a credit to the profession. He never turned his back on a kid or refused to request to help a worthy cause. His integrity, courage, and dedication shone through like a beacon more than matched his ability, and I have personal experience with Dick Duff and can say all that Punch Imlach said there was quite true. The Globe and Mail's Dick Beddoes also had a tribute to Dick Duff uh, this week, and this is what he wrote. He said, T. Richard Duff, the biscuit-colored athlete who once played left wing for Toronto Maple Leafs, announced his retirement from the big league this week. After more than 16 seasons in the big league, Duff said he'd like to spend Christmas with his parents in Kirkland Lake, Ontario. The NHL schedules, of course, have not allowed for such compassionate holidays. His announcement inspired a few letters and telephone calls, all thick with nostalgia. Such this reaction seems completely right to me. Toronto has seldom had among its notable athletes a more attractive fellow than Dick Duff. Beddoes then relates a story of the letter that Dick Duff wrote uh, when he was traded on February 22, 1964 from the Maple Leafs to the New York Rangers. The letter wrote was written to my friends in Toronto. Due to the suddenness of my recent trade to New York, it was impossible for me to adequately express my appreciation for the favorable manner in which I was always accepted in Toronto. Dick spoke well of the Maple Leaf management of his Toronto teammates and of Major Con Smythe for the dignity and character he has endowed at Maple Leaf Gardens. He ended the letter by saying, I came to the Maple Leafs as a boy of 14 and I leave as a man of 28. May I always carry the highest traditions of St. Michael's College and the Maple Leaf organization with honor. When my days in New York are over, I shall return to the city and to the people I know. Dick won four Stanley Cups in Montreal after the two he won in Toronto, but the chances are, in spite of his Montreal accomplishments, he'll always be remembered as a Maple Leaf. His generation included Bon and Brewer, Keon, Pulford, Harrison, Mahovlich, Nevin, Armstrong, Kelly, Stewart, Arbor, Olmsted, Stanley, Shaq, Litzenberger, Bauer, 
and Dippy Simmons. He scored the winning goal against Chicago in the last game of the 62 playoffs, the winner in the first of three consecutive Stanley Cups for Toronto and their first since Bill Barilko's goal 11 years earlier. In 1963, in the first game against Detroit for the Shinny Championship of Civilization, he made the late Terry Sachuk resemble a character out of the ancient Mariner. In the first two minutes, the Detroit goalkeeper could have played for the wedding guest in Sam Coridge's epic. He stopped just one of three shots. Duff beat Sawchuck for two quick goals, as impersonally recorded in the Stanley Cup files. The record says fastest two goals from the start of a game and period. One minute, eight seconds. Dick Duff, April 9th. 1963. Duff scored at 49 seconds and at 108. Final score, Toronto 4, Detroit 2. Memories are made of that. Now Duff retiring at uh, 36 shortly. He says he'd like some uh, non-playing job in hockey and he deserves one. I met Dick Duff uh, actually in person for the first time a couple days after 9-11, believe it or not. That week, we had scheduled uh, an evening in Port Colburn to honor uh, Teeter Kennedy at, at a, a place called the Roselawn Center. I was going to be the host of the evening. We were going to have Ted on the, on the stage, and basically I was going to interview him, something like a, a Michael Landsberg off the record thing, only very little controversy, that's for sure. Teeter told me, that he didn't feel he could carry a session for an hour and a half, which I, I found unbelievable. We would sit for hours in his home in Port Coburn and talk about the old days. But Teeter said he'd like to have somebody else on the stage with him, and I asked him who he would like to have there, and he said, Dickie Duff. I would see if you could get Dickie Duff to come down here and be on stage with us. Dick, of course, was the player who took Ted's number nine after he retired. So uh, I, uh, my friend Paul Patsko, a historian, got hold. Of, I got hold of him, and he gave me Dick's phone number, and I spoke with him. And Dick said, "You want me to come to Port Colburn for Ted Kennedy? When do you want me there? I'll be there." I said, "Dick, we'll send a car. We'll pick you up. I'll take you out to dinner. We'll do what? It, well, actually, we had dinner that night in the uh, Roselawn restaurant." And Dick said, no, I'll drive down myself. I'll be there. And uh, when we're there, he said, oh, we'll do whatever you want to do. He got to Toronto or to Port Colburn about two in the afternoon. And I met him at the Roselawn Center. We spent the rest of the afternoon basically driving around Port Colburn. Dick had relatives in Port Colburn at one time. And he showed me where they lived on the east side near Inco. We drove around and we talked hockey. And Dick told me some amazing stories. He told me about the trade that uh, uh, sent him from Toronto to New York, how he found out. That's a story probably for another full broadcast. And he, and he also uh, was just very gracious. Now, I, I'm talking to an icon of my youth. I was afraid I was going to be terribly tongue-tied, but it turned out he put me completely at, at ease, and we had a great afternoon uh, talking about hockey. Uh and memories of all, all types. That night, when we had the presentation, Dick brought in uh, something that it was really nice. He had thought of this. He got a hockey stick, uh, a mini stick, it was, that he had autographed at the Maple Leaf practice that day. And I believe it, it was Curtis Joseph, Matt Sundin, uh, I think George Armstrong signed it. There were a couple of other signatures. And he asked that we give it to a deserving young hockey player. And I found a young guy who was having uh, to, having to quit playing hockey because of some uh, uh, health issues anyway. And we got the stick to him. And later on, to other circumstances, he actually returned the stick to me. And I have it to this day. But I just want to say Dick Duff was is, is a great guy. Dick is still with us. Uh, I would love to meet up with him again someday. Uh, he's one of the fellows that I respect most in the sport and what he did for Ted Kennedy and for the, the uh, town of Port Coburn where I live was really something special.